This lecture is on master curve model. Previously, we have seen two master curve model. One is on a CA model, another is a sigmoidal model. These two models are used in the performance grading of binder and in the mechanistic empirical design of a flexible payment. We will see three more commonly used model that are Dobson model and Jange pair and Quillman's model. And third one is a Dickinson and Wicks model. Understanding this model will help you to select the suitable shift factor across different range of frequency. You will also understand that these shift factors are temperature dependent and frequency dependent. Also, there are different viscoelastic parameters such as zero shear viscosity, glassy modulus, crossover frequencies. All these parameters are related to um, the master curve constructions so you will see the influence of this parameter in the math mathematical model given for a master curve also it will uh, help in construction of the master curve so first we will see dobson model in a dobson model he gave a mathematical expression to describe the dynamic modulus so he has given a dynamic modulus expression as a function of some reduced frequency so for this purpose, he used a laboratory determined dynamic modulus and phase angle measured over a range of frequencies at different temperature. So first he shifted the dynamic modulus measured at different temperature to a reference temperature using a predetermined shift factor and, uh, and given a mathematical model to this master curve. So for this purpose, he assumed two assumptions relating three parameters one is a phase angle another one is a dynamic modulus and third one is a relaxation spectrum the highlight here is uh, phase angle and dynamic modulus are a frequency mode measure and the relaxation spectrum is a time mode measure so the first two expressions gives you the assumption here in the first assumption the slope of a relative dynamic modulus gr is with respect to reduced frequency is dependent on tan delta so the gr is nothing but the ratio of dynamic modulus measured at any frequency to a glassy modulus in a logarithmic scale the definition of a glassy modulus here is same as previously defined omega r is a reduced frequency which depends on the frequency experimental frequency shift factor and zero shear viscosity eta in eta naught and the glassy modulus gg the another relations relate phase angle and dynamic modulus to relaxation spectrum to understand more on the relaxation spectrum Previously, we have seen that uh, bitumen exhibit different relaxation time and the suitable model to predict the bituminous behavior, bituminous material behavior is a generalized Maxwell model. So generalized Maxwell model with different relaxation time predicts the behavior of bitumen. So um, this relaxation time can be expressed in two forms. Either it can be expressed in a discrete form or in a continuous form. Assuming that the relaxation spectrum time are related uh, are taken in a continuous spectra so the width of the relaxation spectra is represented as b here so for more details on a relaxation spectrum or a continuous relaxation spectrum there is a lecture by professor murli krishnan so please go through the lecture and visit back this master curve model for a clear understanding so finally, the master curve equation proposed by Dobson is of a two form. One is uh, one form is for a reduced frequency greater than some function of relaxation spectrum, and other is a reduced frequency less than the same form of a relaxation spectrum. So master curve has a two form here. Now you can see uh, uh, this master curve form, this function depends on the width of the relaxation spectrum and the reduced frequency. So the reduced frequency in turn depends on the shift factor. So now what is this shift factor that um, Dobson has used in the construction of master curve? So he have used two, two different shift factor. One is, uh, one set of shift factor is for uh, temperature 
uh, T less than TR and other is for the temperature greater than TR. TR is a temperature corresponding to the ring and ball test that is a softening point temperature here. So you can see that the shift factor is determined using a WLF equation, William Landel Ferry equations. So the first set of shift factor has a constant C1 minus 12.5 and C2 142.5. So these shift factors are different from a standard constant C1, C2 that we have seen before. And you can see an another set of shift factor where T greater than TR, which is, which is same as a universal constant C1 and C2 here. So uh, one set of shift factor is failed here in predicting a, over a range of temperature. The highlight here is Dobson used a two set of shift factor one for the range where the temperature is less than a softening point, another for the range where the temperature is greater than the softening point. So the next model is Jonge-Pair and Quillman's model. For, for this master curve expression, he used a relaxation spectrum. So first he defined a relaxation spectrum for bitumen as a log normal distribution. So the form of relaxation spectrum used for the master curve construction is given here where H of T represents the relaxation spectrum, GG represents the glassy modulus here, tau represents the relaxation time, beta and tau m are constants. So beta is related to a standard deviation sigma and tau m is related to the mean of logarithmic of tau relaxation time so relaxation time you will have multiple relaxation time you take it as a continuous spe uh, spectrum which is a log normal distribution take the mean of logarithmic of tau and the exponent function uh, is given so tau m takes a mathematical form uh, as described below in this expression so you define a relaxation spectrum and the dynamic modulus equation is obtained from the relaxation spectrum. So we have seen in the generalized Maxwell model that a modulus as a function of relaxation time. Now we have a relaxation time expressed as a function of modulus. So you need to solve this equation that take inverse Fourier transform, apply an inverse Fourier transform and get the modulus value in terms of uh, relaxation time. So uh, applying an inverse Fourier transform, you get the storage modulus and loss modulus of the form given here. So you can see that the storage modulus here depends on the glassy modulus and other functions such as beta uh, and the function beta uh, and uh, omega r which is nothing but the reduced frequency so uh, you you get the complex integral form for a storage modulus and loss modulus so these storage modulus and loss modulus are not an independent functions and they depend on each other so you get a complex equation here to describe the storage modulus and loss modulus so Jonge pair used the WLF equation to give the shift factor. So the WLF equations but the constant C1, C2 which he used is not a universal constant but he predicted with the experimental data conducted, collected for different binders. So the C1, C2 value varied with different binder. He used Fogel equations which is a viscosity dependent on a temperature T to determine the constants C1 and C2. So you have a logarithm of viscosity dependent on temperature here. Here A, B and T0 are constants. So now this B value here, if you uh, knowing the viscosity eta and at, at a different temperature, you can predict these constants A, B and T0. So this B is nothing but the product of C1 and C2. So, getting this, uh, determining this value A, B and T0 from the experimental result will help in estimation of C1 and C2. So, the highlight here is this uh, constant C1, C2 are not a universal constant but it varies with the different binders. The next model is Dickinson's and Witt's model. So, he used a hyperbolic equations to describe the 
dynamic modulus and phase angle of a binder. So you can see two expression here. One is for a dynamic modulus and other is for a phase angle. So you see here the relative modulus which is gr as a function of omega is related to reduced frequency and another factor beta by a parabolic function. This is a curve fitting function given for a master curve but this beta is a, a shear susceptibility factor which depends on the material. So you have two different expressions um, one for a dynamic modulus and other for the phase angle but these two expressions are related to each other so we will see how these two expressions are related to each other uh, uh, first we will see what is shear susceptibility factor beta here uh, in this equation gr which is nothing but the dynamic modulus relative dynamic modulus the same as def as defined before uh, and uh, omega is also same as, as defined before. Uh, beta, which is nothing but the shear susceptibility factor, is determined from the dynamic modulus. So we know uh, that dynamic modulus has uh, is like uh, has a two asymptote. One is where the asymptote at uh, reduced uh, reduced with the less reduced frequency, when that is a lower value. Another is at the uh, uh, other asymptote at, uh, at the higher frequency. So at the higher frequency corresponds to the glassy modulus and lower frequency corresponds to the zero shear viscosity. So you select the point where, uh, uh, where omega r is equal to 1 or a crossover frequency. So at um, from omega r equal to 1 or a crossover frequency where storage modulus and dynamic modulus are equal to the point of glassy modulus gives you the shear susceptibility. So this indicates that in this region only the dynamic modulus changes with the frequency. So in this indicate the sensitivity of a change in dynamic modulus with respect to frequency. That is why it is named as shear susceptible parameter. So this is something which has to be measured from the master curve and it is going to depend on the binder. So now you have two different functions. One function for a uh, complex modulus or a dynamic modulus and other function is for a phase angle. Here the term dynamic modulus and complex modulus are interchangeably used. So complex modulus or a dynamic modulus here it is uh, assumed to be the same. So now you see here uh, the equation relating complex modulus and the phase angle delta. So this two equations are not an independent equations. It is all dependent on this final expression which is given here. So in the final form of a delta, you see here the delta phase angle as a function of frequency is a function of omega r and beta. In addition to there is an another parameter called delta dash. So this delta dash is a constant or which is not the, nothing but a minimum phase angle. Uh, the phase angle cannot be zero for a viscoelastic material. So there should be a minimum phase angle. So this delta dash is a minimum phase angle given for a, uh, any material. So this again is determined from this, uh, from this relation that is relating a dynamic modulus and a phase angle. So you have a hyperbolic equations describing the dynamic modulus of the phase angle and the complex modulus but these equations are not independent of each other. So this equation uses a shear susceptibility factor in constructing a master curve. So we have seen three different master curves in which two uses a relaxation spectrum and one uses a shear susceptibility factor. So uh, just to quickly summarize, we have seen uh, that shift factor uh, to, to predict the shift factor for the construction of a master curve, William Landel Ferry equations was commonly used. But uh, this constants in a William Landel Ferry equations that is C1 and C2 are found to be different for different temperature ranges and it is also varies with binder. So it's not surprise that uh, there's no surprise if you use C1 and C2 to be different from the universal constant. It depends on the binder. It depends on the temperature range you are interested in. And 
We have also seen that the glassy modulus, shear susceptibility factor, crossover frequency are to be experimentally determined and to be used in the uh, fitting of a master curve. Thank you so much.